Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in Equestrian War, episode 4 of us playing as the Realm of Kyria, a somewhat modernized nation. But, we gotta talk about Throne from the Ivory Tower. If I may begin, Miss Blossom, I'm confused, began the chair Kirin. Mayflower Bloom was before the imposing Central Committee of the All-Kirin Collegium, appealing the rejection of a research proposal by one of the Ethics Committees. The chair Kirin continued, your proposal is very well polished, if disturbing. Setting aside the question of whether this collegium would ever approve what seems to be nothing short of a eugenics program, I'm troubled by your methodology. You suggested intentionally inducing near transformation for study. Mayflower Stiffen. She had honestly expected to be grown on the eugenics first. Yes, Chair, pro proving the connection between the Nerex transformations and heredity, and demonstrating that greater or less inclinations towards the Nerex house can be inherited, as the first step in the broader project of, she was cut off by the Chair who was in the starting to realize she had already, already made up his mind. Yes, your aspirations to breed the Nerex out of the population are more than clear. My concern again is with your methodology, excluding it completely the forcing a Nerex transformation amounts to psychological torture, just how do you expect the Collegium to defend itself when the religious authorities guard a word that we're funding this? We already have the prestige of the Aeolian Monastery to protect us. Your proposal will get this institution shuttered. Mayflower opened her mouth and replied by the session. Certainly search forward with honor. A notion of rejected appeal was introduced and passed before she could say a word, and soon she was being ushered from the hall to a wearying friend, River Lily. Oh, I heard everything, Mayflower. I'm so sorry. River Lily tried to hug Mayflower, but the mayor shrugged her off, hanging her head low. I know that proposal is really important to you, but it doesn't have to be the end of your research. You just need to try again. But first, you need to get some fresh air clear in your head. You and me need to get out and see the countryside before you and spend another minute working on this Nerex business. It's just not healthy. I can't show my face around here anytime soon, so I guess some sunshine can't hurt me, I guess. And for naval stuffs, invasion speed, convoy rating. I'll go with speed. They are rating prosperity. Three and a half years ago, the Grand Galapagos were seeing an impossible dream. The naive optimism of Matriarch and Premier is essentially no real experience in governing or economics between the two of them. And yet, as Matriarch's peer range shine and clarity of Vermilion today, the Grand Gallop Armor has seen a, been a stunning success. Golden and crimson banners hang from every window and balcony in the realm today as Kieran celebrate the fruits of their possible labor since the end of the silence. Schools, factories, and armories rise alongside ancient temples and sandalwood plantations, demonstrating the delicate but determined balance between tradition and modernization that the realm has struck in these past few years. How much work remains to be done, the foundations lay for a bright future in Kyria. Ray Chan's address to the realm was broadcast live via radio as far away as Sorghum, and in a few years, new radio relays may allow the voice of the Matriarch to reach as far as Chrysanthemum and Verdam. For now, though, those cities, just in jubilation and celebration as well, had to wait for words of the Matriarch to arrive. I'm so proud of each and every care to play their part, however small, in laying the silence to rest and ushering us into a prosperous future. The mistakes of the past can never be forgotten, but here today we have proven that they can be undone. I'm proud to declare the beginning of a new era for our realm, the era of radiant prosperity. Kyria is in bloom. Fantastic. As actually, for this now, um, it costs 80. I think I'll just go with Spirit Fire Power. I always go with Spirit Fire Power. Generally, not always, but usually. And I want to go with Overwhelming Firepower. Proper Heritage sounds like fun. It's better forces attack. Huh. I think for us, though, really, Overwhelming Firepower is probably what we're going to go with. Because we're using this one, which is not bad, but I want cheap uh, cost of everything here. I'm going to go. I like this group here. So 18 is not bad. I guess it, artillery still costs quite a bit, which sucks. But we're going to go with that. And eventually get some engineers button up. Go low, go high, go high. So now we're missing quite a few guys here. Which is not great. But at the same time, it's alright. We got enough in the reserve. And then we'll do a Kieran Consocialism. Consocialism. New Kieran political sphere is broken up into incompatible factions loyal to the regional stronghold. Uh, by structuring the government around balance and mediating these factions, we can ensure cooperation at the expense of traditional majoritarian principles. And then the New Kieran army. Paul Griffinstone, huh? I can totally read correctly. I totally can. A constitutional matriarchy. Centuries of rule by decree from Vermilion came to a formal and complete end today, with a final unfettered decree from Matriarch Spear Rainshine. Already for several years, she granted prerogative and authority to the plenum, the premier and the morning secretary, but today she uh, vested in the power in them permanently and bound herself and all future matriarchs by the constitution of the realm of Kyria. Making the rare decision to proclaim this decree herself in the capital, Rainshine simply said that a new century brings in a new reality, and I will not, out of pride, deny my subjects the freedom to govern themselves already enjoyed by so many of the world's nations. As Matriarch Superior, I am tasked with guiding Kieran kind to peace and prosperity, uh, and I feel that Morning Secretariat and the Premier will be both of these things to Kyria. On the subject of the Premier, Autumn Blaze resigned her office immediately before it was abolished by the Matriarch's decree in the new constitution. 
Following the Matriarch's proclamation, the Morning Secretary met to choose the first democratically elected Premier of Kyria, and in light of her success in leading the country through the Grand Gallop Honor, chose to elect Adam Blaze for a five-year term. A new down for her harmony and the Morning Secretary. Great! Oh, look at Autumn Blaze. Fantastic. If you're going about Autumn Blaze, please go right ahead. Boom! Nice. Special Forces cap plus three. It's not, not much. Unseen Gilding seems pretty good for us, too. Oh, who do we have here? Oh! Political Power. Oh, that's good. Burn Flare. Oh, so now we don't have this person. Okay. Honestly, we don't need more weekly stability change, so... Interesting. I may focus on getting rid of Sweet Briar, then. Yeah, that'll probably be the next one. What else we got here? Uh, Professional diets. Oh, this would be good to do. Industrial standard bears. Well, let's do the new Kyrian army. Uh, the initial reforms have been remarkably successful in bringing our old banners into obscurity caused by the silence. That's slowly turning them into a modern army, however. There's a lot of room for improvement. And if we want Kyrian to truly be a respectable military power once again, it would protect its Kyrian from dangers from beyond. Probably be a good thing. Also, we have a couple of ginseng tea here to keep us nice and uh, satisfied. What is this one we're doing? Read your resistance, huh? Of consocianism and concordance democracy. Though perhaps no one predicted it, Autumn Blaze has proved either a particularly shrewd or unreasonable lucky statesman. The single thing that on all of the competing factions of the Morning Secretary could agree on is her nervousness all about being dominated by the other factions. Perhaps taking advantage of this fear, Autumn Blaze could convince all the major na national political parties to agree to complex and comprehensive power sharing agreement. The future of Kyria is not, it seems, a majoritarian democracy, but a delicate balance of regional political interests and the guarantee that the Morning Secretary can never be dominated by a single popular party. Well, some have already begun to criticize this new consocialist con government as permanently entrenching the elites of the parties already repre 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 represented in the Secretariat, I cannot be denied that these complex power sharing agreements, if held to, will be important backs up against the kind of factional and regional rivalries that so severely plague the Grand Gallop Forward and the three and a half year plan. All this will come the last few fiery tippers in the Secretariat. Pieces of hibiscus blossom beautiful for a day. The fool morning is passing, the wise tend the garden. My studies in the New York State so far have become largely theoretical, and with the collegium's rejection will probably remain theoretical for the foreseeable future. Their fears about inducing a New York State intentionally are understandable, but they can't understand that the thing they fear so much is precisely the thing I'm trying to prevent with this research. Yes, yeah, so there's a little flame around the door, but the whole house will be ablaze shortly, better than we escape now, with merely blistered hooves and perish the un incoming inferno. Not Noctilicent charm did not oppose the silence over a few peasants going naric and scorching their rice patties, but the pre-silence literature is, dear, is clear. The changes brought to Kyrias by the coming of modernity created social and class conflicts and inspired mass outbreaks of Nyrick never before seen. Kyria with pen of fury over years of uh, perceived injustice can sustain the Nyrick state for hours, days, and in some cases, and easily, easily reignite again and again. In Stalingrad, these drives caused a revolution, and Kyria they nearly put the entire realm to the torch, nearly destroying Kyrian kind. No cure can deny. The Grand Gallop Onward has been a surprising success, but it's hardly the cure all for that ills uh, that Autumn Blaze would have us think. They're hungry cure, they exploited a kin, and they have cure and they have not cure. And there are already protests and disturbances daily across the realm. I'm certain that the presence and power of the Matriarch Superior was the sole reason for the Grand Gallop Onward itself did not inspire a mass near revolt of the same kind we saw before the silence, yet Autumn Blaze of New con Socialism removes the possibility of there being any decisive or authoritative voice that would calm the whole country at once. Without the power of the old matriarchate, or single dominating faction, or else the safeguard would be that she does not attempt to pass anything unpopular with other parties in this power-sharing agreement, which is no safeguard at all. Kyria is being pulled in a different dozen directions. Harmonists and socialists, traditional reformers, national patriots, religious fundamentalists, it doesn't matter who is on top. It matters that the conflict between these groups will be our doom unless we can solve the New York problem for good. Our only hope is that it can be bred out of the population over time, but this kind of socialism is much too weak to impose such a policy and sustain it. If Kieran kind has survived, we need a strong realm, a unified realm. One that can do the unpleasant thing now to secure a safe and scorched uh, future for Kirio. I don't believe it's not going to provide that kind of leadership, and I don't want to sit idly by while our anemic government fails to take action. What can I possibly do? So, which one is this one? Uh, which war, huh? Uh, which one do we want? Captain of Industry is not bad. So, if I click on this person, it's, can we re get a replacement? I don't mind getting more what political power. Political power is nice. We got to build ourselves up too. So 
That's fine. So that helped us out quite a bit with that one. <clears throat> so what is this? Apologizing to the Rising Sun. No. Of course, one of the following. Keep us a balance along with the Matriarch. That'd be good to do, really. Requires all the following. All this, so... New Army General Staff. Uh, Air... Army Air Corps. New Army General Staff. After the silence, Kiria lacked experienced officers and general staff, with their only experience being quelling rare revolts against the Matriarch's decrees. It's beginning to change, but a general staff still requires some reform if we were to make Kiria's army a truly modern and competent one. Yeah. Because this one will get her radiance's command. Bonuses of the land, combat, air, naval, and military modifiers. The house and battle system conscription law may not be changed. Lock decision number 88 and several others. Radiance is command now. If I did not greatly cherish, and none of the loyalty that a thousand banners have shown to myself and my predecessors these long centuries, a matriarch range I began, then there will be certainly no need to reform them so that they can continue to faithfully serve the realm in these changing times. The new standard army is not a replacement for the banners, nor is a slight uh, against their uh, valiance. It's simply that acknowledgement without far, that war is changing, and even our finest wars must change with it. To show the loyalty of the banner, Kieran, uh, matriarch spear range on herself was delivering the proclamation of the reorganization of the armed forces into the Vermilion and Kyrian army. A thousand banners of Vermilion, many of whom were ready before, are perhaps the most venerable institution in Kyria apart from the priesthood of the Way of Fire and the Matriarchate itself. From time immemorial, Banner Kyria defended the realm on all frontiers from all threats and wherever they are by land or sea. Be their enemies the Kyrian or Zevlu, raiders from the realm or colonists from further Phaethesia, the banners have ever held their own. What a new Kyria is in a new century needs to be a new needs a new army, a new modern one, flexible, rational, and efficient. Under this new model, the old banners will be substantially reformed into the command structure. Composition and recruitment model will keep their heritage intact. These new or, or reorganized banners will form the core of the new standard army around which more specialized and modern formations will be arranged. To all those who have taken up arms and laid down their lives for the realm, matrix, and constitution, know that the Vermilion and Kyrian army will honor its past as much as it looks to the future. And forever above Vermilion, your sacred banners will fly. We cannot help but feel that Autumn Blaze ought to have been the one delivering the speech. With the potential for disgruntling uh, the realm's militaries at stake, it was perhaps best to bring the most unimpeachable voice available. There is no sign of dissent, only a rousing cry for the matriarch. And the Zykirian military militarchy threatens war. Huh. The Zykirian militarchy is massing its troops on the boards. We must prepare to defend ourselves against their invasion. Oh, hello. From south. Oh, God. They don't have a lot of stability. They got a lot of manpower. We have more. Uh, they have 43 divisions. That's not good. Uh, I'll go two usually. And you guys are our Marines, which are decent combat width. Um, oh, you guys are Marines. 12 combat width versus Seafire banners. It's fine. Uh, this doesn't go well. We gotta do some some funkier. To arms. Brussels, please. Depth and defense. Partisan operations by the state of forces in the rural interior of the Western Kyria will bog down enemy invasion. Invaders will be forced to exchange blood for land until they are decisively smashed by the hammer of a well-organized counteroffensive. Compromising of rapidly mobilizing conscript armies built around a professional corps of crack units serves as many formations on the anvil of disruptive partisan warfare in the enemy's rear. Your vanguards. Amphibious chassis. Please don't go to war this yet. Please, 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 please. How thick are they? Well, they're not extremely thick. They're decent like us. But they're way better than us right now. Depth and defense. 
Banner Kirin Cadres. Banner has been the backbone of the Kirin army for centuries, but while the system has served us well so far, it is now without flaws. We need to start reforming the Banner Kirin into a proper professional army. Their experience combined with a more modern conscription system will allow our army to be uh, a force to be reckoned with. Crap. Um, I'll be honest, I might have to use Khan's commands here. We're definitely not ready for a conflict like this. Which really, really sucks for us. Because I want us to do well. But, like, we're not ready for this. So, yeah, no, I'm not going to tolerate this. So, we'll, uh, we'll see. I'll do the new army, new army general staff. And, of course, Banner to Kieran to Cadres. Um, we're just not ready yet. I mean, we're just not. Which really sucks for us. Uh, what is this? Weapon procurement. Planes would be nice, but we don't really need those yet. Uh, we could probably do state under, under secretariat before fire control. Kieran may have been caught up with modernity, but modernity has its issues. Inequalities breed in discontent. Discontent is inspiring a streak of New York attacks. I do get address these social issues. We need a modern, sophisticated New York expression force. The army has a past and a future. Autumn blades arrived at the bustling estate of the band of the scented moonflower early in the morning. General Fir Firethorn had other appointments in the afternoon. Within a few minutes of arriving, she was escorted by nothing less than an honor guard of Firethorn's office, where she got our bounty already waiting. Once the pleasantries were out of the way, she got directly to business. No waste using time with the military mayors. <clears throat> the problem with the most famous banner mayor in the realm, Autumn began, and Firethorn immediately retorted or snorted. Zenith Bloom is the most famous banner mayor in the realm, she said, and Otto could only grimace. I can't trust Zenith Bloom, she said, but I know I can trust you. You felt the scent of Moonflower high throughout through everything, and you've taken you're everything the banners were ever meant to stand for, which is why I need to help making sure that their legacy never dies. A lot of care to worry about what the new military reforms mean for the banners. I want you to be the head of it to prove that we're not throwing away their legacy. We're carrying it forward. You're shooting to be approved or confirmed, so if you accept it, I'll be prepared to appoint you as a new generalissimo of the Vermilion and Carrion Army. There's even a very nice uniform in it for you. Autumn's magic opened her saddlebags and lifted out a neatly folded military uniform in the equestrian style that also had silk embroidery and the fiery patterns that gave it an obviously Kieran flair. Fire throw was silent for a few moments. I'll be honored, Premier, so long as I also retain the matriarch commandery of the Senate Flower, uh, Moonflower. This Kieran are kin, I couldn't leave him behind. Autumn simply smiled, your banner is yours until the end of time. Cool. And then, what? Yeah, we're gonna do a banner of Kieran's cadre, so. We're kind of here. They're not on the lines right now, but they'll get up there. Also, we're extending to make sure, extending our Seafarer Baroner. So we added in another battalion of Marines. So hopefully we can get these guys deployed fast because we just can't hold up the line here by ourselves. I mean, it, it, it's kind of insane. I mean, 1v1, yeah, we're fine. But yeah, we did move up to Blossom too, but uh, it just is completely unfair. We can't do anything about it. It's not like we can make it that many divisions anyways. So... Uh, at this point, I have to tell him the fort's defense. If this is a hold, well, then, uh, kind of screwed. So, the ambient few. Look at that. Fire control rapid. Huh. Interesting. Regards to the motivations, grievances, and beliefs, our sinners are criminals. The spat of arson attacks perpetuated. Perpetuated, perpetuated by the group such as Red Angry Fire will not be tolerated by the Matriarch's government, which is why the Premier tasked me with heading the Under Secretary for Fire Control to coordinate our efforts to suppress both the fires and those who start them. Our professional fire, firefighting brigades was partnered with volunteer fire departments across the country to suppress both a, uh, accidental New York transformations and the unexcusable bout of attacks. The Kieran gave this pressing press conference was grizzled old and old, and the ports in the room uh, gave this press conference was. Uh, including their notes as prior service with the border of the militia of the western provinces. Quite the standard place in charge of the newest of the Kira's internal security forces. A hoof shot up from the crowd under Secretary Redwood, the report began. What do you have to say about the new Reform Bureau report indicating that most New York attacks rise from social inequity or inequality? What do you think it's appropriate to send military police after downtrodden Kira? The under Secretary gave an indignant huff. Social inequality is not an excuse to burn down homes, businesses, schools, and farms, all of which have been attacked. If Kira complains about, about how much Kira is running, it's run, then they ought to petition the Matrix or the Premier. If they want to throw a tantrum and burn this country down, they're going to have to get through me. Best keep your temper in check, though. Oh. The first iteration of firefighting operations doctrine issued by the State Under Secretariat for the Fire Control to its primary field force in the number 268 Fire Control Rapid Response Brigade allowed for the limited use of artillery to aid in the quelling of conflagrations of a severity equal to the Fire uh, Severity Index, FSI, level 3 above. Artillery but barn with high explosive shells would be authorized as a means of quickly cleaning large swaths of combustible vegetation to create a fire break in a path of a significant fire bush or wildlife. Oh, that's cool. War comes and the fiery hearted look to the swords while the temperate souls fashion a heavy shield. 
Riverlow's insistence that I leave my work behind and tour the realm may have seemed foolish at first, but I have to admit the fresh air has been nice, and the new trains and roads are a testament to the success of the three and a half year plan. Unfortunately, everywhere I've been so far, these technological successes have only made it easier for me to see our social and economic failures. We've been in Mexico for a few days, and I've found the time disagreeably rough and militaristic. There are drunken cadets on leave from the training everywhere, causing mischief in the seedier districts of the city, and I have to say that I'm looking forward to leaving the oh, River Lilla says she has come to business that may keep us here a good while. There was a prayer today that I found deeply disturbing for two reasons. The new state Secretary for Fire Control is shoving off its first armored firefighting information, unofficially. As everyone in the realm surely knows, this is Kira's new rapid response force of New York outbreaks. Seeing the level of militarization that the simple fire brigade has, I have to say that I'm torn. On the one, if the side of firefighting cadets with body armor tanks and artillery comforts me to know that even Autumn Blaze is not so naive to think, they can simply ignore the potential for a mass near transformation. But at the same time, it is a height of naivety. She believes that her harmonious consocialism will survive the first incident where the new fire brigade has to bomb and bayonet some kid who goes near in opposition to her clique's policies. I was watching the parade, I was accosted by two street urchins who were jeering and making faces at the firefighters. When well, they noticed me, they trotted over and began to cause trouble. First, they introduced themselves as Sudden Fire and Prairie Blaze, and they said they were a group with called the Red Angry Fire, or might have been the Red Angry Red Fire. I wasn't paying too much attention at first. I asked them why they were jeering at the firefighters, and they started explaining that the Red Angry Fire wants to burn all of Kyria down. I can't tell they're just two hooligans having some fun, or they're really some part of a group, some group, but they started saying things about the other protests and riots and arson across Kyria that the Red Angry Fire supposedly has a hoof in. They started talking about how they think Autumn Blaze is a traitor for stealing out Equestria. Another one burned down what she's built so a new Imperia Kyria can arise from ashes or something like that. I left pretty quickly after that, and it seemed to like how uncomfortable I looked. I mean, Autumn Blaze might be too optimistic for my taste, but she ain't a traitor. After meeting those Red Angry Fire urchins, suddenly the fact that she's given the Red Fire a uh, Fire Brigade tanks and artillery doesn't seem quite naive either. Yeah, cool. Death and defense. <clears throat> the realm is vast, we can certainly use it to our advantage for defense purposes should we, the need arise. If we face another spear enemy, we should retreat deeper in our country and employ Scorcher's taxes to slow and spread them out, strain their supply lines, and give our soldiers a time to reorganize and prepare a counterattack. The Army Air Corps. Unfortunately, after a century of isolation, our Air Force is pretty much non-existent. We have a lot of catching up to do, including building new air bases and studying important plane designs and theories of air warfare, however, the key to the military are optimistic that we'll manage to catch up and create proper Kyrian Air Corps in no time. Forever gunboats. Of the great Milifluv and other rivers are our lifeblood of Kyria. It is crucial that we learn how to utilize them not only for trading but for military purposes. Though the use of gunboats, our armies will be able to navigate and attack the rivers with unmatched efficiency. So we do this one. And then, uh, ooh, wire obstacles. Officer company. How about this one? The Front's Mayor, Frontier's Mayor, and Armed Service. Kira's boards, along and behind them, are our many creatures who would gladly take a piece of our realm. We're going to devote the entirety of our army to protecting them all the time. We need to establish regiments of Frontier's Mayor. Brave Kira would patrol our borders, warn of, um, of, of an upcoming invasion, and be the first to stave it off. Permanent and professional. The recent reforms to our army are already showing effects. The soldiers are much more effective, well trained, and disciplined than in the past. It's time we finalize the army reports, or forms, and truly establish a permanent professional army of the realm. For realm and constitution. Recruitment for the Office of the Constitutional Standard Bearers has been fraught with questions, and gossip and mascots have been ablaze. What kind of union needs ideological examinations? What kind of union rejects a candidate for excessively matriarchist tendencies? What kind of unit needs riot control training and stay behind guerrilla training? And with each cadet failing the program, more gossip leaked to an increasingly rapid press or presence in the city. At last today, a single-page press release came from the military school to address the questions. Kira is rife with extremist ideologies, and tendencies that left unchecked will present a serious threat to the constitutional order that has been achieved since the ending of the silence. The Office of the Constitutional Standard Bearers has been formed to monitor, investigate, and if necessary, confront any extremist groups that might perpetuate perpetuate uh, violence against the Constitution or the government of the Premier. The Constitutional Protection Brigade will soon complete its training and deploy to address concerns as they arise. The Office will also soon create civilian, legal, and investigative departments to assist in this mission. And various support services will also be created. The Office's mission should not be troubled in Kieran, who does not intend to violently attack the principles of constitutional, constitutional government. Thus far, the Senate Bears refused all questions regarding the conspicuous absence of any apparent loyalties to the Matrix Superior. From peace to lost breath. Another one from Mayflower Bloom. Direct the soul for with wisdom as a commander directs her banner, and 10,000 hooves may build a city or destroy one. <clears throat> Sorghum's a strange city. I haven't ever been this west before, and I haven't ever intended to, but River Lily said it's important for me to see the whole realm, not just the east and north. And I have to say that the food here is strange and the Kieran's stranger, but I like it. We arrived in, Sor in Sorghum at about the same time as some news from 
Vermilion, Autumn Blades, and the Secretary have created a new office of the Constitutional Standard Bearers. From what I can tell, there's a combination of an armor division, an intelligence agency, and the counterinsurgency formations. A military plan on Autumn Blades is not, and this kind of expensive force, which of course end up being deployed against some New Yorks, uh, if any start threatening constitutional order, is a distraction from the real solution of the New York problem. Such a distraction, in fact, that if it weren't for news about New Yorks and fire suppression attracting my attention like a magnet, the Standard Bearers would have completely drowned out the other news from Vermilion. The Secretary has also established a Kyrian uh, volunteer fire department to centralize and support local volunteer fire departments that have been cropping up. I wasn't exactly sure what that meant, and the papers were clear. Apparently, my confusion showed on my face because River Lily helped, helpfully suggested that we see if Sorghum had a local VFD, and that's how I ended up sharing dinner with a fascinating mayor named Orange Blossom. From the guns the Standard Bears were apparently carrying, I wasn't sure what to expect from Orange Blossom. Though I imagine a mayor in homemade armor leading a ragtag group of firefighter militias in a battle against a gang of Nyrex. But Orange Blossom was a smartly dressed and well-spoken mayor who had been a monk before she ran for the office of the VFT chief in Sorghum. When I started to ask her about the VFT-controlled Nyrek, she shook her head and explained that the VFT does, does everything it can to stop Nyrek from becoming Nyrek in the first place. Or stop Kieran's from becoming Nyrek in the first place. Uh, Layla la la later told me that I had my mouth hanging open in confusion as Blossom explained that while the VFD did five fires, it also tried to find and help Kieran to her stress and at risk of transforming. It makes a lot of sense that the monk of the way of fire would be in charge of that kind of operation as Blossom told me about community outreach programs, counseling and therapy programs, social welfare programs, all designed to help disturb Kieran and recover peacefully. I started to get a nervous feeling in my gut. Blossom's method of dealing with Nerex seemed inefficient, difficult to implement, expensive and requiring constant effort and dedication and maintenance, but then, isn't that what the way of fire did for centuries? Is the VFD a modern version of the Way of Fire's original goals, and that didn't work? More importantly, if these volunteers. Orange Blossom said the Sorghum VFD had almost a thousand members. If they could actually help Kieran from go keep from going to Iraq, um, then maybe we don't need to breathe that side of us anyways. I'm not sure of anything, but I'm as hopeful and friendly as Orange Blossom was. <clears throat> the scene door made a small Kieran on my shoulder start whispering that I might try, or, or might be very, very wrong. So we got another division here, and we're doing better now, um, down here. Overall, it's not bad. Uh, they still have a pretty good combat width and whatnot, you know. They're pretty good overall, but still. Uh, that being said, I, I'm just I, we just weren't ready for a war like this. And I guess technically we're supposed to like help defend, but as soon as the enemies start taking a crap ton of territory, there's no way we can hold the line here. This was the best bet we had. If we can't hold here, you're going to lose completely. So that's which is not cool. So I guess in the future we're going to play this again someday. We're going to need to uh, definitely make sure that uh, huh, we have uh, more divisions. They, of course, they do still have better decryption than us, but still. Would like to make an encirclement here, but we'll see. Here, count by couch tees. 31,000 versus 67, which is still not bad, but still. I'll send you two here, send you two here, too. Our divisions are pretty heavy on artillery. Or at least soft stack, at the very least. Which it should be. Good. My goal would be nice to get to Solace, Solstice. Of course, if I could do just a general attack, that'd be great, too. Obviously, here, they're not doing so well. Oh, on the sides and up here. It's really eating into their supplies. Mass adoption of FM radio. Nice. Good more research speed, too. That'd be nice. Go here. Very nice. Stay in place. As we're going to slowly just start moving south. Keep taking the railroads, that'd be nice. Permanent and professional. Giving us esprit de corps. Mm, territory of volunteers. Uh, oh, let's go with Anhu's Grenadiers. Grenades are definitely one of the most uh, useful, albeit dangerous, inventions brought by the advancement of warfare. We can be used qualified Grenadiers who would be able to support our infantry in the battlefield. We just need time to train them to ensure they're as efficient and safe as possible. As Kyrian Esprit de Corps. <clears throat> our special forces can tip the scale in our favor during the war. If we keep their morale high, we'll be able to perform to the best of their ability uh, or capability. Therefore, we need to ensure that they're always satisfied with their work and ready to fight for Kyria. Nice. Straight for the capital and see what happens. Now you're split in half. Can we do this, maybe? Would we do okay? Now they're forcing the defense, like we did earlier in this campaign. Or for really this episode, because, uh, well, we couldn't handle it. 
kind of really did suck for us. And I got better infantry equipment, which is pretty nice, though. That should help us out immediately. <clears throat> Get an orchard. We can't win everywhere here, but finally we're doing okay. Of course, we've been improving our army doctrine as well, so... Definitely helps out. Losses, uh, 100,000, uh, almost 50,000 versus 100,000. So there's that. Good, take it into supply. Jackie Clan, that's good over here. And even over here, we're doing pretty well. So, I mean, early on, I mean, you just can't do anything against it because you would have lost. But, I mean, what do you want me to do? Resource extraction would be bad. Engineering, Christian power, maybe. On to his grenadiers. There you go, finally, there you go, there you go, there you go. Political advisors. Ember Wayne, yeah, I must go with Ember Wayne. Uh, assault Barding? At this point, we should be okay to like ignore some of this, but... The Bardian commonly used in our armies are both highly protective and durable, but limit its wear's movements. However, recently our armor designers came up with a scheme for a new type of Bardian that would sacrifice some of its defensiveness for greater mobility. And switch this new armor during assault to afford the soldiers faster and more aggressive attacks on enemy lines. We already have an infantry specialist there. We can wait for that stuff too. Start going in. Mulberry. Modernization, we need way more guns now. North Zebrican War. Great support. Left behind snipers. Traditional swordsmanship. Soldiers of the land. We can expect Kira to ever be safe from other powers in the world sooner or later while we'll to defend ourselves. We must ensure that it's as difficult as possible to our enemies, but by teaching our soldiers guerrilla tactics and our homeland to our advantage. We're using it as to our advantage. Because eventually we had to go down here to the last one. Talayari. Something like that. We need more ships, too. Kingdom of Zongo. I don't think we just find anybody, can we? Armourists cannot. Which kind of sucks. So at least we did okay. Still. Which means we're going to come back over here and do the... Plurijurisdictional devolution. The new system of provincial dials will allow us to increase local autonomy and offer some olive branch to regional tra radicals. By reducing the power of the Secretariat, will also lower the stakes of the national elections. So we get 1.75 political power a day. We're on war economy. But it does help our economy too, so. Expeditionary units. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of using uh, those amphibious tractors and whatnot. I mean, they're alright. Exit from any coast. Breakthrough? You get more organization. Plus two. Line artillery, which we do use. It's push forces attack. And get more defense. Yeah, let's go build the northern railways. Why not? Man, we're really out of guns, aren't we? Oh boy. So after this, the Remdev Plan Com. The Realm Development Planning Commission's new investment bank, funded by the state which will work to expand Kira's industry in line with the government's economic priorities. 
Cool. <clears throat> Torpedo boats, scout boats. These aren't very good, are they? God, no. Frequency analysis. A little bit of radar. Maybe. A prize, a Kirin tail. Industry in full bloom, but we're going to first talk about, talk about the national plan for the provinces, which I never did understand in the pre build or the pre release, I should really say. It has provincial diets, states, actions. So, Rome changing news from Vermilion is also all too common, but at least this reform came with plenty of notice for weeks. The nation has been listening ba with bated breath. As the morning secretary bickered over the details of a proposed new system of regional legislatures, the provincial diets has been rumored that the, last, the final law required no fewer than 500 amendments, carefully fine-tuning provincial authority over everything from fishing rights to radio broadcasting regulation, but at last today, a visibly frazzled autumn blades gave a press conference with an immense binder and hoof. So that every day you get to spend two months talking about the finer points of forestry law and tort reform with a few hundred of your closest friends, but I really am proud of the work that the secretary pulled out of this bill, and the humility it took to admit, to admit that's important for other care to have a say in the, how the country's run. I mean, it's not as if we know everything. Now the national plenum of the provinces, bringing national or regional expertise to the legislature, well, it's a good opinion right down the hall. And of course, even with a plenum, we could definitely make, can't make one law that'll make every care in fragrance happy at the same time as every care in Verdun. All of the provincial diets can. Well, they need to make more than just one law. They need to pass one for each province, but a conference was, as to be expected, quite rambling with the nation breath can breathe a sigh of relief that this latest political quagmire is over, and at the same time break out the stumps, bunting, and ballots for the upcoming provincial elections. Hopefully after the elections, Autumn can get some, much, some clearly much needed sleep. Nice. Oh, look at this. Let no one say I have nothing and sink low in spirit for conquered weaves all threads into the tapestry of life. Or fate. River Lily and I took to some pleasure of a cruise along the Great Mellow Flug, and I have to say it's been good to spend time with her sightseeing the woods and hills of peace and plenty, and not thinking about the politics and narics and narric politics. At least it was enjoyable until our ship's boiler failed, and would make for some miserably tiny town called it like chief repairs. As much as I was trying not to think about politics, I couldn't help but start thinking about rural Kiria. One reads about peasant revolts and farmers' rebellions pre silence, but really, uh, Kiria and politics has always been revolved around our biggest cities. The countryside is this immense monolith that no Kiria pays any mind to until it's burning down. So I started asking around about how things were going in Lychee and discovered that a local party activist named Song Thrush was giving a speech in a tea shop that the same afternoon. Let me say, Song Thrush is like a mare possessed. She was proudly wearing a Roman Harmony party lapel, and I was ready to hear a stream of cheerful vagaries. Devoid of substance, but no. Thrush took the room by storm. She began with explaining the success of some local project to hire an ambulance boat that could visit the villages along this part of the mill of and bring Sakir into the clinic in Light Chi, but she was soon interrupted by the heckler, a heckler, who pointed out the Home Affairs Bureau had, had originally promised enough funding to build a proper hospital in town, and that's when Thrush left into action. Swiftly condemning this heckler's grumbling and pointing out that while funding was never forthcoming, the Home Affairs Bureau was doing the best it could with what it had. The ambulance boat could take the sickest cure into sorghum after all. It would be the only health care that the cure in the village could access. Something was better than nothing, as it were. The rest of the cure president, who I later learned, well, members of the Home Affairs Bureau, seemed reassured by her passion. I left her speech feeling strange. Light was clearly big enough to need a hospital, and sorghum was an unpleasantly long boat right away. The government can barely provide for the cities, and the more I dwell on it, there must be a lot of small towns like Light feeling increasingly neglected. If the cure, apart from one dissenter, doesn't seem disgruntled or angry, they just seem resolved. Intent to make do and intent to help themselves until Vermilion gets around to them. Let's do a fundraiser at the end of the social, and River and I both toss in a few tales about Oxado's funds for a local soup kitchen. I suppose rural Kieran in some way has it worse than anywhere else, but knowing that the Kieran here are organizing to make their lives better, instead of grumbling and smoldering, it's almost as if up, as uplifting after hearing that the silence was lifted. So here we go. We have automatic reselection of incumbent parties. Upon the end of the incumbency of the ruling party in the provincial diet, they will automatically be re-elected or reselected for a subsequent term. What can alerts, huh? So, like for a million, per se. Provincial ruling party. Well, bonus of daily harmony, political power, and harmony support. Because Vermilion Basin is a stronghold of the realm and a harmony party, got 25 political power to take this. Seems like the right idea to do that. United for harmony takes 25. You're plus 0.3. Oh, United for harmony. Realm and harmony party. Conquered caucus. Movement for modern carrier, consumer goods fact factories, modern carrier science block, United for Harmony, Daily D Supremacy Support, Young Curia Party, Bonus of Stability, Rising Fire, 
So, because of the way they are aligned of United for Harmony, Movement for a modern carrier. Consumer goods. Daily command power? Would, I mean, that power is probably more important than anything else. Radiance. Uh, two less than seven. They seem pretty much independent of whatever. How about this group? They don't care either. Mascot? We got them. I mean, obviously we can choose all of these people here too, but still. Oh, the last time I did this, I didn't do it. I did okay. National Association for Care and Patriots. So that sounds like this. Supremacist one. Growth. Resource efficiency gain. Well, there's no resources there, so that would be a kind of a waste. 675 did for this one. So one of these two. Well, the growth the resource one just makes no sense, so we can go with that one there. For the right alliance, there's no resources. Boast of War Sport would be nice. Over here, what are they aligned to? A circle of serene tendencies, huh? Serene tendencies, so not aligned, more stability. Theocracy, huh? So you get one for these guys. One, two, three, four. Well, uh, there's not a line up here, too. Over here, what are they doing? They're kind of independent. It doesn't matter to them. That's Serene's Serenity. It's fine. Yeah, no. Blossom. They don't get anything. They don't get anything. Sorghum. You think Sorghum would want something here? Okay, so these guys in Hyacinth is also a stronghold for all this stuff too. Hmm. Maybe that one. Auburn Isle. Cornstalk. Is there a map mode we can see? Because I want—I just want to like do with the ones that, that are the cheapest ones, and then put more stuff in. Because right now, national plan of the provinces, the realm of Akira's post silence, second autonomous judicial political system could be described as a social harmonic, unitary, evolved, plurijurisdictional, syncretic. Consociational, co determinative, multi party, bicameral, parliamentary, concordance, democratic, and multi denominational, confessional, constitutional, matriarchy with caring qualities, regional features, theocratic characteristics, and a high degree of decentralization on local self rule. The Milan Kyrian army, well, that's looking decent. Rain shine, stream of scaffold, way of the fire, democratic matriarch, war for Terran, that's cool. Um, Stronghold of Kyria awoken. Recruit the whole population factor. Religious socialism. Monthly population. Monthly population is okay. It's not great. Okay, this one. A little rising fire for these guys. Population is even less. Yeah, we'll do that one this time. A lot of provincial diets. Oof. So right now, how are we looking? Interesting. Hmm. Funds. Keepers of balance. Gains the balance of the realm, which grants dynamic bonuses and to political defending institutional stability. Oh god. I'm out to wait for that one as, as much as possible. 
So after that, long live the matriarch. The character emerged from the sound strong and confident with a sense of national identity and citizenship, but the matriarch spirit still plays an immense role presiding over the Kyrian polity. Under the constitutional matriarchate, Rain Shadows should continue to inspire unity and pride among the Kirin while entrusting them with their own self determination and governance. Industry of Full Bloom. Arnold Bloom finished reading through the stack of papers on his desk, his sneer, having grown increasingly pronounced as he'd taken each page, and the weary government under minister sitting across from him had, in turn, become increasingly uncomfortable. After finishing the last page, Bloom sighed and rolled his eyes. So I'm being made the scapegoat for anything that goes wrong with Kira's industrialization, he declared, and the minister found himself stumbling over his words. You're being made chair of Kieran of the steering committee for the most powerful state corporation in Zebra Cup. You're being given funding, a workforce, your own research initiative, institute, and your own security forces. Uh, Bloom snored. Everything except for free hoof. I mean, honestly, you could have been a little more imaginative than uh, binding a central planning commission to a five-year plans. Bloom turned around in his chair, looking out the window over Fragrance's increasingly high-rising cityscape. Don't get me wrong, I'll take the job. Here you can do is some competent economic direction. But the morning secretary had already bundled up this little commission with all the red tape they could spare. I have my work cut out for me. It's like I said, when something goes wrong, it'll be my head, not the secretariat's. He snored and waved a hoof dismissively. You can go. Tell the premier, whoever decided to appoint me, that I'm glad to see that a business Kieran is being put in charge of the business of business for a change. The minister found himself escorted out of his office as quickly as he had invited him. And who knows, we might actually get lucky something like it done. Enables the Realm Development Planning Commission. Build new factories across Kyria. Oh god. All this thing. The Realm Development Planning Commission allocates and distributes resources for the development of Kira's industry based on prescribed ratios of civilian, military, and maritime industry. The Commission oversees the safe construction of factory complexes and ensures this happens in a balanced, efficient, and coordinated manner that is responsive and congruent to the most pressing material need of the Vermilion Realm. Actual ratio. We cannot build any more cities. You can build more. Build a military factory. Oh, for straight up 50 political parts, not bad. Uh, propaganda? Yeah, we could use that one. Keep building railways. Well, it doesn't really matter who we get here, so. Construction work is not bad. I'm going to help support as much uh, harm support as possible, but we'll see. Along with the matriarch. <coughs> a prize, a Kirin tail. The Kirin tail is in dire need of some discipline. Sharply devaluing and backing the new value of the gold standard will hurt the poor, but it'll also attract new investment and, importantly, enable the government to borrow internationally. General for Mayflower uh, Bloom. Nice. Oh, it's this. Layer ceramic. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Very nice. You need, like, tanks, huh? The work of future gardeners. It doesn't happen often, but Autumn Blaze relished a chance to share a sedate cup of tea with rain shine. Undisturbing the gardens of the past, she could open up to the one Kieran she knew she could trust and who trusted in her turn. Could I ask you something? Autumn began, interrupting the conversation. It's to do with, well, with all of them. Everything we worked so hard for. Rain Shine was certainly surprised, but she gave an encouraging smile between sips of tea before Autumn continued. The governor, the premiership, consociationalism, consociationalism, the secretariat. Kieran trusts in those things because they trust in you and you created them. That's how they feel anyway. I know we sort of created two of those things ourselves after you made the secretariat, but I mean the point is, do you think the realm will be ever believe in the government without the matriarch telling them to? You signed away too much so much power, but if a successor tried to claim it back, would Kieran really stand up against the voice of the Concord herself? Rainshaw took a long, deep measure of breath. None of it happened tomorrow, she said. Must get the Rome time. Centuries of tradition are not uneasily done. Nor should they be. When in a few short decades, the Premier will have been born after the lifting of the silence, they will know nothing but constitutional matriarchy. For all of your efforts, Autumn, you only have planted, and you've tended the first shoots of a modern kira. That'll be another gardener who tastes the fruit of your work. Autumn nodded slowly. Maybe. I'll worry for us, though. I mean, we almost lost all of it for a moment there. But we still could. We have a long way to go making the country truly whole, and as much as we made a show of you stepping back, we both know it'll be you holding the realm together for a long time until all these wounds can heal. The realm has changed, but it still needs its mother. Gold and silver are spring rains, too much or too little, each bring strife. The sluice that hoards its water nourishes no fields. Who knew that a few simple uh, greased hooves would all be it takes to welcome in fragrances high society? Uh, I mentioned the bloom the, uh, name of the city, and it's easy enough to get an invitation to anywhere. <clears throat> 
Uh, if I enjoyed being the center of attention a bit more, I think I could want to see her forever, and I have my cousin's generous donations to the NAKP to thank for them. How's society here at Fragrance is all abuzz. The matriarch herself is visiting the city as part of the tour of the Greater Providence. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about seeing her per in person, but it was a fascinating feeling. For all my particular convictions about politics, when I first saw Rain Train in the box at the opera I was attending, I was absolutely starstruck. I nearly missed an opportunity to meet another fascinating Karen sitting next to me. Some expatriate stock trader, one of the fickle current's distant, distant diasporic connections, named Margin Call. In between the all glances of the matriarch and the endless parade of ar arias, Martin Jacall and I were able to hold an interesting conversation. He trades in equities, not a surprise from his name, and apparently makes quite a fortune doing so, though he had a somewhat shabby appearance for a Kieran who claimed to be so rich. I soon figured out why. Martin Jacall is a terribly guilty sort of Kieran. He's all but blurted out his fury at the all recent news of the strikes being repressed and peasants driven off their lands for the industry that the Grand Gulf Onward has unleashed. I pointed out that his fortune comes from trading stock in the same, same companies that are breaking strikes and buying up land. His guilt was obvious, which I can only assume is why he confessed two more things to me. He's been donating generously to the Fragrance Volunteer Fire Department, which, if anything like the Sorghum Department, is a worthy cause, but he's also funneling money and laundering some more questionable operations for the Red Angry Fire. My gasp nearly got me expelled from the opera. He quickly explained that he thinks of RAF. I sure to think that they are legitimate enough to have an acronym, are fighting a good fight against exploitative bosses with unlimited foreign capital backing them up. We started naming some particularly cruel business ventures. I uncomfortably recognized a few of that my own family has a hoof him. When I asked him what he thought of Autumn Blaze, he surprised me again by saying that he admired the merit and commitment to a prosperous career for all. After all, she was personally selected by the Matrix spirit, was she not? Blaze is an experience must play into one of the mysteries of Concord's benevolent will, he said. I think Blaze at the Red Angry Fire he will, will hold Blaze's hooves to the flame and force her to address the increasing inequality, or perhaps he's simply a stallion of two minds torn in two different directions. Marge called did ask me about my own profession, and when I happily explained to him I work on eliminating the New York State of Sekiria, he asked me how that could possibly work, when griffins and zebras fight among themselves over the same things I'm afraid that Kieran can do. In particular, he talked at length about the Prywin Civil War. What good does eliminating the New York State do if such a devastating conflict can arise even among griffins? By the time we departed, Marge Call was almost lecturing me. I think he may have a point. Kieran's problem may be more economic and social than biological, food for thought, though I do not know that I completely agree. Cool. All other gear is good. We're slowly trying to catch up to everything that we missed. Oh, what is this? Apologizing to Rising Sun. Rising Sun in the Western Kirtan, loyal to her, were excluded from the planet at a critical juncture in Kirtan's history. That was a mistake, and we're all going to be fully fixed. We can at least begin to reconcile with the Rising Fire. Representation for the Rising Fire. The Rising Fire was barred from a formal political representation during the Grand Gallop onward. Historians will judge Autumn Blaze on her decision to do so, nevertheless, any possible justification for the Rising Fire's political exclusion and disenfranchisement arising from the ex exigencies of the three and a half year planet since it's appeared. The Rising Fire must be allowed to enter Kyrian politics. Take only what is needed and lay up stores for tomorrow. An orchard may bear wood once or cherries for a century. The sea, the sea, the final of the sea. I've missed the ocean since I joined the Collegium, and looking out from the side sea shores uh, these past few days, I've been refreshed in a way that I haven't been in a while. River Lily is having a good time too, so we spent a day shopping along the harbor front. The recent reforms of the tail meant that our money wasn't going as far as it had before, not that it was an issue for me, but I could hear the grumblings in town. For example, Lily and I stumbled on a business mare arguing with her landlord, and the brick can confirm what I was afraid of. The evaluating the tail has brought plenty of foreign business into Kyria, which helped the central government handle its debts most effectively, but it's also run small Kyrian businesses up against the wall. This poor mayor, her name turned out to be Snowy Wool, couldn't afford the interest on a loan she'd been forced to take out to keep her restaurant open, with how rates have shot up after the reforms. The inflation's quite bad, and Snowy was hardly the only voice loudly complaining on the docks, but her particular case struck me because she was pleading with her landlord for an extension on her rent as a matter of charity. Not for herself, but for her customers, who she apparently is feeding at her symptoms below cost, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to eat. Yet more evidence that the Grand Gallop Onward left quite a few cured in the dust, but also very heartwarming to know that uh, the common cured are doing, what they, doing their best to help each other out. After this argument, the landlord grudgingly agreed to give her a few more days. I approached Snowy Wool and got to her talking about the restaurant as she explained everything about the rising prices and the difficulty that Kieran and the city were facing. She seemed adamant that if there were hungry Kieran and Sisi, it just wouldn't be right to be trying to make a profit off of them, though she wasn't sure how she was going to keep her doors open. I don't know how quite know quite what came over me. I've never done anything like this before, so I blurted out that I could offer her a cheaper loan to get her through until the troubles with the tail tied over. She accepted eagerly, and I'm happy to say that I stuck to my word and made sure her money was on its way. 
That night over our dinner, Lily told me that while she was a little surprised to see me spending money like that, she was proud of me. Part of me wanted to say something about how foolish she was, I was but I realized, seeing her smile, that I wasn't foolish at all. In fact, I started to think if I would even feel right collecting the interest on that loan. Putting food in the bell is as fast as you need to see him is as good of a use of money as any, really. That's very true. And you what, we're going to build two military Ah, three military factories. Screw everything else. And I'm going to keep all this stuff here, too. Uh, give us our daily bread. Uh, I'll give it, the tide will rise by decree. Poverty in Kira is extensive, exacerbated by the rapid movement of peasant class to the cities. We must begin to address their needs, even if the process will be slow and expensive. The Fragrance Admiralty. Fragrance used to be the center of Kira's maritime power before the silence, even nowadays. A Kira can find them sunken ships from the old mothball fleet near its coast. It's only natural to help the city return to its former glory, as the realm's main port in the seat of the power of its admiralty. Cool. For those who waited. Close, close support aviation. In addition to bombing crucial targets, aircraft can also be used to provide substantial support to our infantry. If used properly, we can tip the scales in our favor significantly, of course. Due to our lack of experience with the planes in general, we need to thoroughly study the strategy first so that we don't accidentally bomb our soldiers. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. For those who waited. Rising sit in an blaze sat quietly from each other as a small tea table in a private room at Chrysanthemum's more posh public houses. Autumn was in shambles. She couldn't stand to look at Sun's perpetual upturned sneer. Was that just Sun's face, or was it some fresh mouse directed at her? I very much doubt whatever you're going to say is going to be some official apology for shutting the door in our faces, Rising Sun said. I don't know I'm with, so uh, Sun continued to stop striving for perfection and say what you must. Autumn took a deep breath and suddenly it all spilled out at once. I know I have some disagreements with a rising fire myself, but you have to believe that that, that wasn't the reason. Winter Frost and Fickle Current were trying to drag the entire planet to a halt. They were let in, and I was a clueless new statesman that just thought if I could make every Kieran happy, um, I at least should at least try to make the most uh, of them happy. And so it all but rolled her eyes, and that was enough to make Autumn catch herself and slump dejectedly into her chair. I know it's too late to make amends, but the rising fire isn't barred from the Secretariat any longer. And to show I mean it, I'm here to offer you your pick of a cabinet position. To show the rising fire is welcome in Vermilion, as it always should have been. <clears throat> Sun can only scoff. Well, how can I refuse? With an entire ministry at my disposal, perhaps I can begin to overcome this head start you have so graciously afforded the frost and current. Thankfully, the rising fires endured this disgrace with their heads still held high, she said. And then her stern face softened, if only slightly. It's not lost in me that it takes strength to admit you were wrong. I only really wish you were also strong enough to have avoided wronging me at all. A damper removed from the firebrands of the West. Look at this one. Mm, can't do this one. So we're going to really focus on harmony here. You remember the fire is nice. Even though months have passed since Autumn Blaze barred me in the rising fire from the all Kira planet for a national revival, and though I don't doubt the sincerity of her apology, my anger still has not dissipated. Her naivety shields her from knowing just how much does she undermine my ambitions and the whole of Kira. If the rising fire had gotten its hoof in the door of the so-called consocial system, we would, have, we would have been in a much stronger position to challenge all of our opponents, but now we're related to the party with popular competitors. It used to be that the Marxists and Kyria were understood to be godless forces who wanted to dismantle Kyrian society in lieu of some quasi-scientific way to promote socialism, but now they've changed. The peasantry's opinion of them has also changed. It frustrates me that, to no end, that a single mayor's decision which could have taken the country down two completely different paths denied me my rightful position to safeguard and guide the revolution. Sure, the great uh, Gallup were succeeded, and sure, the country's in a prosperous and stable position, but let me tell you this. The country would have been much further ahead if I were in charge. Their refusal to ask for my assistance, and their assistance on making the rising fire unimportant, or at the very least, much less notable than we were, is to, is to the entire country's de detriment. Even still, as not as though the rising fire is banished from Kyria, we have overcome greater odds to achieve our ends before, and though we've been backed into a corner, we're not out of the fight. We'll find a way, I'll find a way to make sure the rising fire is stronger under my command. After that one, of course, we have representation for the Rising Fire, and, uh, oh. For land and labor, it's, let's fight together. By needs of the urban and rural poor are distinct, but they're united by common desire, better conditions for the working classes. As such, an alliance was brewing between the three largest left-wing politics in, or parties in Kyria, uniting, unifying the disparate bases into a potential political bloc. But I think we'll end it there. The next episode might be the last one, but we'll see. I'm not sure, as we're trying to get through everything here, and we're still training and whatnot, but... Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I apologize for using comments commands earlier, but it just got a, became a pain in the butt for us, but I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.